Hello everybody, a um, couple of things obviously I look a bit different because my uh, my facial hair is shaved, I need to get this part sorted still. I've had a pretty good weekend, uh, let's see what happened on Friday, I got some, it was just a good day, I, I reached for the 100,000 mark on my overall bankroll on Prime Poker, and uh, had Chinese for tea, well I say Chinese, I had chicken, chicken balls, ribs and chips. Yesterday I went out with the parents, uh, got some good stuff, I have a book coming soon, which I'll say the name of in a moment, but most importantly, I got this, Resident Evil 7. I really like how the 7 is in Roman numerals and it's tied in with the evil, like the VIL. I don't know why I like that. And the book I'm going to be getting soon is Development Hell, the NXT Story by Michael Citric from WhatCulture.com. Looking forward to it. And uh, today was also a good day because I got to watch UFC 214 and it was amazing. There was one fight that was really bad, but it was amazing nonetheless. So let's go on to the prelim card as we head over to the Honda Center. Yep, in Anaheim, California, for UFC 214, Cormier vs. Jones to a rematch a year and a half in the making. Let's go. Well, I say year and a half, I mean two, two and a half years. Anyway, first fight, prelim card, uh, Andre Touchy Feely, I just love his nickname so much, Touchy Feely, it just makes me laugh. Uh, well, Feely is his actual surname, it's spelled F-I-L-I, so, yeah, uh, he took on a newcomer in Calvin Katar. Sorry, Kata. He has a very difficult to pronounce her name. It's K-A-T-T-A-R. So you'd automatically think, oh, it's Takar. Oh, sorry, Katar. And then it's like, no, it's it's Kata or Kata. It's just, bleh. Names in the UFC can be confusing. And this dude's American, so he should have, like, one of the least confusing names. Anyway. Good fight to get rings off. Not the most exciting one, but, you know, it was very... It was pretty much all stand-up, extremely back and forth. Birthman... Both men, both men landed really, really well, uh, but uh, Keita did obviously land the more uh, damaging strikes against Feely. He did get a good win uh, by decision, and uh, I'm going to check on Feely really quick. Alright, okay. So he could still be, uh, he could still be going into it because he uh, he did win his last fight. I like to check his record because most of the times when I see Feely fight, he loses. But there you go. But yeah, you know, this is a, a good showing from Philly, but it was a better one from Taker. Taker? Kater. Ugh. I'm just thinking of Takar from Far Cry Primal. I haven't even played that game. Ugh. Anyway. A <laughs> uh, really, really good start uh, to, yeah, to what was a really good card, but we'll get to the rest of those now, actually. But yeah, really good showing from Calvin. I should have just called it that from the start. Uh... A uh, good chunk from Andre, he's not going to suffer from the loss, so, you know, they made the right call, Calvin did win by decision. All good. Next up is kind of an interesting fight, as, um, Brian Ortega took on Hinato Moicano, both men undefeated at 11 and nothing, and they both have a 12 fight in their record, but for Ortega it was no contest, and for Moicano it was a draw. So, who would win this fight? Well, the fans ultimately, because this one fight of the night, and deservedly so, because it was absolutely amazing. It was a really, really fun fight. But the winner ultimately was Brian Ortega, who won three minutes into the third and final round, and he holds a record now, actually, which he's now extended, as uh, being the only man so far, and this is something I pointed out like, during the fight before he won it, he's the only man to have four wins in a row in the UFC, and all of those wins were finishes in the third round. Anyway, yeah, this got fight of the night. It was a really exciting fight, really good. A lot of great stand-up. Moicano landed some beautiful shots, so did Ortega. Thing is, Moicano knew he couldn't go for the takedown. And in the third round, he made the dumb mistake of, like, basically saying, fuck it, I'm gonna go for a takedown. And immediately, like, while he's struggling for it, Ortega managed to get his left arm up, and I loved like the fact that I managed to see how he did it. He got his left arm up and ran his uh, Moicano's neck, and as soon as Moicano drove him down, Ortega got the guillotine, wrapped his legs around, tapped him out. You know, got fight of the night, ended his submission. It was an amazing fight, really, really good. One of my top two for personal pick of fight of the night. I'm I'm glad that this one won it. Uh, but yeah, really exciting fight, really good way to keep things going. Next up, yeah, another really good fight as former events my champion Henan Barrow took an Aljamain the Funkmaster Sterling. And Sterling won by no decision. 
This was an okay fight. It was more middle of the road than the other two I just mentioned. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I mean, in round one, Barrow managed to get uh, and like a takedown midway through and controlled the fight pretty much entirely. Algermain managed to get a takedown in round two and controlled the fight pretty much entirely from then. Third round, he landed a lot better strikes than Barrow and stunned him a few times. Didn't finish him, got a really good decision win. It was an okay fight. It wasn't great, but it wasn't terrible. Uh, it was one I definitely think is worth watching, though. And uh, who knows, it might even be worth your time. So, yeah, I, I liked the fight. I didn't love it. I wasn't crazy about it, but it did what it needed to do. Uh, I don't think Barrow's going to suffer from this loss. I, I think Aljamain Sterling has added another really good win to his record. Actually, let's check out Barrow really quick. Okay, he'll he'll be fine. His last fight was a win against Felipe Nova, so... Yeah, things are good. And then we're going to move on to the main event of the prelim card. It's going to be exciting. So... Uh, sorry, I was cracking my neck. Ugh. So, the main event of the prelim card is Jason Knight against Ricardo Lamos, and... You often forget how good Ricardo Lamos actually is. Because... This is a good fight, Jason Knight has established himself by this point as a really good fighter in the featherweight division. A lot of fun to watch. Lamas beat the piss out of him, pretty much. It was it was fairly back and forth. I definitely give Lamas the advantage in striking. Then he just started opening up with amazing boxing combos, going to the head, mixing it up, like, you know, going around and uppercuts, going to the body as well, with a couple of kicks thrown in there. The leg kicks were really important in setting up the punches, but it was mostly the punches that did a lot more of the damage. And uh, he got a TKO win in round one. And if I... No, nah. I was going to say I thought he got performance tonight. He didn't, which kind of sucks. He got robbed. I mean, Ortega and Moikano didn't get robbed to fight tonight, which I'm happy with, but yeah, it was a really, really good one. And, uh, you know, a really good win for Lamas. He won it, like, with about 25 seconds left in the first round. So, yeah. Yeah, we managed to open up uh, night really well. Got a really good win. And, uh, you know, got a finish. And Jason Knight is not going to suffer from those as I mentioned. He's been on a tear in the UFC. This is just a small roadblock for him. I feel like he's going to be back soon. He's going to be back to his winning ways. I like Knight. He's a bit of a trash talker. But he's really, really good in the octagon. And a lot of fun to watch. So, yeah. Uh, this is just a really uh, another really good fight. And a really good way to cap off the prelims. And lead us straight into the main card. So, we have the first main card fight. Jimmy Manua against um, against Vulcan Ozdemir. And uh, interestingly enough, if neither man could make it to the main event uh, between Cormier and John Jones, whichever one couldn't make it, Manua would be their replacement. Uh, obviously, both men made it and they had, a, they had their main event, which I will get to, obviously. Gotta save that for last. <laughs> oh, God. So, I didn't know Ozdemir had this much knockout power. Let's just say that. He won, I spoiled it. Uh, actually, I did technically spoil this for myself, because I accidentally fast-forwarded too quick into the fight, then, like, in, <laughs> like 42 seconds into the first round, like, bet, not even a minute in, I had to rewind it, because I was like, oh, shit, I missed something. And I was expecting Manua to w walk away with the win, because he's got really good knockout power, and then, no, I had to go back to the beginning of the fight. Clinch work was exchanged, Ozdemir just landed, started landing some good knees, and then landed really good punch combos over the top to the temple, then uppercut, then over the top, then uppercut, and just kept doing that over and over, and then finished Manu on the ground, and got a knockout, and got performance the night for it, which is well deserved. Holy shit, though, I was not expecting it to be over that quickly. And, uh, let's see. Oh, it's right, ah! Oh. Ozdemir's record in the UFC. I did see that certain pro fight. I think I saw the Serkinov one as well. I won that one in 30 seconds. Hmm. Well then. I'm going to keep in mind that Volcom Ozdemir is someone you did not fuck with in the octagon because holy crap, he put in a great performance. Got performance tonight, as I mentioned, well deserved. It was a really good fight. Really good. Well, I say it was a good fight. It was a good one sided ass whooping. So. <sighs> But Jimmy is not going to suffer from this, which I'm happy with because I like Jimmy Manua. And, uh, yeah, he's going to be bounced back from this. So, just on to the next fight now. 
So the next fight was my personal second pick for Fight Night, Robbie Lawler against Dol Uh It was a really, really good fight, a lot of back and forth. <laughs> it was pretty much entirely stand-up, from what I remember. Excuse me, I'm burping a lot. Uh, there was a lot of really, really good exchanges between both men. And it's weird, because at the end of the fight, they calculated all the, um, all the strikes that both men had landed. In total, I, I did the math in my head. Robbie Lola landed 72, Serona landed 83. Sorry, something weird happened with the door. Uh, yeah, so... Lola landed 72 strikes in total, and uh, Serrani landed 83. And I thought, Serrani won it. You know, he landed 11 more strikes. And they gave the win to Lola. By your now decision, I was like, okay, if it was a split decision, maybe I'll get it a bit better. I wasn't happy with this call. I mean, I like Robbie Lawler, and I'm, I'm okay with the fact that he won. Yeah, But I feel like Serrano should have won it. I feel like he got kind of robbed. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a rematch between these two. But it was a good way for R Robbie to get back to his winning ways, and Serrano's not going to suffer from it. I've been saying that a lot for this card. But besides that, it was honestly a really exciting fight. Um, yeah, it went the distance. Both men looked really, really good. Uh, right off the bat, I will point out, you know, they both showed their respect, obviously. And uh, Robbie went straight for a clinch and just landed a crap load of punches on surrounding and caused swelling under his left eye. Almost completely closing it up. Was it his left? Yeah, I think it was... No, it was his right. Sorry, it was right eye. I mean, overall, I feel like Surrounding should have won, but you know what? I'm not pissed with the fact that Robbie won. It was a good showing. So there you go. Next up is what I like to coin as the Coco main event of the evening. Uh, I'd rather bowl the Coco main events. And it was Chris Cyborg against Tonya Evinger. I think I'm saying that right. I'm going to have to check really quick. Tonya Evinger, yep. Uh, for the Featherweight Championship. And Chris Cyborg won. Knockout in round three. Uh, about two minutes into round three. It was pretty one-sided on the side of Cyborg. Like, she got a lot of knockdowns throughout the fight, kept backing Evinger up, because Evinger was trying to be smart and not get into a major brawl with Cyborg, which is for the best, because Cyborg is fucking crazy. She crazy. She crazy. And uh, it, was, it was a good showing uh, from Cyborg. Evinger did enough. I mean, I don't think anyone else is crazy enough to have taken this fight against Cyborg. Uh, even I wouldn't get in the octagon with her. Like, Cyborg is one of the few women I would not get into an octagon with. I mean, obviously I couldn't because, you know, males aren't allowed to fight females in the UFC, which is fair. But if they were, I would never get into an octagon with Cyborg because she's crazy and she can knock people out really well. As she proved here, she landed a good couple of Muay Thai knees and just finished Evandra on the ground with some good punches. Nothing else I can say. Also, whilst I remember, I don't remember if it was for this fight, but Gordon Ramsay was there in the crowd. I mean, you know, other fighters were there. Cub Swanson, the pretty, pretty Paige Van Zandt was there. Tony Okokoi Ferguson, my boy, who's going to be champ one day, I believe that. And, uh, oh, I said there about Brian, like, when I was watching the fight, when he beat Moicano, I thought, yeah, Brian's going to be a champ one day in the featherweight division. Maybe. I know, I'd like to see that fight between him and Max Holloway, that'd be good. But, yeah, this was a really good showing from Cyborg. Hopefully she'll do a better job with the featherweight belt than Jermaine Durandamy did. And hopefully, well, I don't even need to say hopefully, this fight was for the women's featherweight belt was a lot better than the fight between Holm and Durandamy. That was so terrible. So, so terrible. That was such a terrible fight. <laughs> anyway, on to the coming event. And speaking of terrible fights, this is the really, really bad one that I foreshadowed kind of earlier. The current main event, Tyron Woodley defending his multiplayer battle against Demi Meyer. Tyron Woodley won by an decision and... Oh, God. <laughs> oh, this fight was so fucking boring. Oh, God. This fight was boring. So, props to Tyron, first of all. Using his wrestling to counter the really, really good takedowns of Maya. 
Uh, he landed a few strikes and actually got a knockdown in round two over Maya. And that was about all the damage he did. He spent most of it backing away and defending takedowns. When he was being more aggressive, the crowd were actually really excited. But even they were chanting the word boring. And I was like, yeah, this fight is really that. It's fucking boring. And I don't want to be bored by Tyron Woodley. He's an exciting fighter. I mean, this is the dude that knocked out Robbie Lawler to get the belt and had one of my favourite fights in 2016 when he had his first defence against Stephen Thompson. <sighs> this year has not been good for Tyron Woodley in terms of the fights he's had. His second fight with Stephen Thompson was boring. And his, his fight with Demi Mai was somehow even worse. I I did not like this fight. It was not a good co-main event. And, uh... I mean, Tyron kept the belt, which I'm alright with, but... Just... No. Just no to this fight. All of the no to the fight. Just no. On to the main event, no. And finally, something two and a half years in the making. I didn't mess it up that time. Uh... John Jones versus Daniel Cormier 2. And this was a really, really good main event, I'm going to be honest. Uh, winner was John Jones in round 3, uh, about 3 minutes in by knockout, with a really good, yeah, he landed a really good head kick, and followed that with some good punches on the ground, and eventually won. And this was a really, really good fight. It was a really great main event, and I'm glad that John Jones managed to come back and get the title back. But I'm going to say something real quick about Daniel Cormier. Uh, I seem to be one of the only people who kind of likes Cormier. I mean, he is a nice guy. Granted, he was talking a lot of shit about John Jones in the build up to this fight, but then again, that was to fire up the field a bit more. It happens. It's called the Conor McGregor thing, you know? It's called selling a fight. But no one seems to like Cormier, and that baffles me to no end. Like, he constantly surprises me, personally. You know, a lot of people say, oh, Cormier shit. He's not. He's really not. He's, out of 21 points, he's got 19 wins, and his two losses are to John Jones, who is the best light heavyweight in the world. Again, you know, again, now that he's got the belt. And it really pisses me off when people rag on Cormier, because... I do like him. I got no shame in man that I like Cormier. You know, he's a likable guy. He can be a nice guy when he wants to be. He was just such an asshole in terms of this rivalry with John Jones, which I'm kind of glad is over now. But no one seems to like Cormier. No, I, I like him. He's not the most endearing fighter, but he's a nice bloke. I can forgive him for that, you know? I mean... And he was kind of being right with the whole... Uh, with the whole thing about John Jones, like, and his stupid behaviour outside the octagon. And I am in agreement with my dad, as well, because he thinks that John Jones should not have been given to the after all the time away, and I'm like, yeah, probably not, he should have worked his way from the bottom again. That's a problem that the UFC really needs to fix, in my opinion, but what can you do? But this was a really good fight, really good way to cap off the card, really good main event. John Jones won. Got the belt back that he never really lost, lost. So, yeah. Uh, that'll about do it for this UFC review. As I mentioned, this is a really good card. I I do believe that. It was really enjoyable. <sighs> uh, next week. I think it's next week. I'm going to have to look really quick. Let's see. Dun, 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 5th of August. So, yeah. Next Saturday. Uh, Sergio Pettis, who is Anthony's younger brother, against Brandon Moreno. That'll be a good fight. Um, if I don't see you before then... Well, actually, I might see you before then, because I have uh, my top ten video games list coming out soon, maybe, hopefully. Who knows? <laughs> uh, but yeah, really good card. UFC 214 was a really good card. The last few cards have been really good, which means the next one might be a bit bad. So... <laughs> Eh, I don't know. It was really good. Uh, the fight with Woodley and Maya was shit. And the one that did get... Oh, John Jones got performance tonight as well, obviously. I, I forgot to mention that. Uh, yeah, the fight between Ortega and Moicano was extremely exciting. And Ortega is still undefeated now. Uh, actually, I'm going to quickly mooch to see 
um, what what is no contest was. Let's see, it was originally a submission win for Ortega uh, against Mike Dillatore, um, but it was overturned after he tested positive to, for drostanolone, which I think is a type of steroid. Yep, an anabolic androgenic steroid. The more you know. Don't do roids, kids. Well, I don't. I don't know if kids even watch all your videos. They probably shouldn't. I swear a lot of these. Anyway, really good card. UFC 14 was probably one of my top cards of the year. Uh, the Anaheim crowd were in full service, which was always good. I got no problems with it. One tiny little thing, though, and now I'm rambling by this point. But after the fight was over and Cormier was crying, uh, the, the main event between Jones and Cormier, Cormier was crying and he was a bit angry. And Dana White was, you know, you could see in the background, even though the camera was mostly focused on uh, John McCarthy, who was the ref for the fight, and John Jones, who um, had just won the belt. Even though it was focused on, on that, like you could see just in the left, Dana White nearly blowing a gasket trying to calm Cormier down. <laughs> Uh, and the post interviews are actually surprisingly sweet, especially on the half on the bar for Jones. He said some really nice things, and then he called out Brock Lesnar, Bork Lesnar, Brent Lofter, Bork Lerner, Brack Lerner. I I don't know. He called out Brock Lesnar. I'm excited to see that, and I'm excited to see what comes next on my channel. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> I hope you're all excited though, and I'll see you all next time for whatever the next video is and whenever it'll be released. It'll probably be the next UFC review. Uh, I don't really know, but whatever it is, I'll see you all then. Take care. Farewell. You are all awesome. Awesome.